Hi, there is this big Twitter account called World of Engineering that posts interesting engineering facts and questions and they posted this thing that drove me nuts. NUTS! Let's read it together. Imagine a 747 is sitting on a conveyor belt as wide and long as a runway. The conveyor belt is designed to exactly match the speed of the wheels moving in the opposite direction. Can the plane take off? Now I really want you to think about the answer. Take your time. Maybe leave a comment about it here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, don't let me speaking distract you. In fact, visiting my sponsor Brilliant could teach you how to deal with these physical problems. I mean, they have so many interactive courses on math, computing and science, you can learn what you want easily. Are you done thinking? No? Then visit brilliant.org slash electroboom to try Brilliant for free for 30 days and the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Okay, your time is up. I tried to answer it myself, but the more I thought about it, the more annoyed I was. And the replies to my answers were even more annoying. See, the question poses an imaginary situation. Reminds me of the electrical question Derek of Veritasium posted a while back that triggered a whole lot of discussions. I hate these questions with a mild passion because it's an imaginary situation and in these situations, in order to arrive at the same answer, it must provide all the proper conditions. But it never does, does it? It almost feels intentional so that people fight about it and increase the interaction with the post. Which is fine, I guess. At least in scientific cases, it turns people into thinking, which is nice. But I hate it with a mild passion. What are the conditions? Is it happening on the moon with no air or the air is as thick as honey? Like those dreams where you can barely <laughs> run away from a serial killer following you. Or maybe there are unicorns that can just lift the plane. See, I can only answer based on the conditions I pose on the question. Let's try to solve it. Okay, let's assume we are on Earth and there are no unicorns oh, in our normal atmosphere. But what does it mean the conveyor belt is designed to exactly match the speed of the wheels? Are we talking about the round per minute speed? Because in one turn, the wheel can go a couple of meters, but the conveyor belt a couple of kilometers. For simplicity, let's assume it means if the wheel wants to move forward at one meter per second, the belt would move backwards one meter per second. Now, what causes the plane to fly? It must move with sufficient speed through air to create lift force on the wings, which means the jet engines must be on pushing the plane forward. Now to simplify, let's turn off the friction between the wheels and the belt. The wheels simply slide over the belt and won't turn because there is no friction. The plane gains speed and eventually flies. Both wheels and the conveyor belt stay at zero speed. All conditions are met and that answers the question. Now the number of replies to my tweet saying if the wheel wants to move forward, the belt moves backward at the same speed and so the airplane is stationary is too damn high. An airplane is not like a car that its engine powers the wheels to push the road to move forward. You would be right if that was the case, like me walking on a treadmill going nowhere. But in an airplane, the jet engines push the air back at super high speeds, creating thrust. And it has nothing to do with the wheels. Now, even if there was friction between the wheels and the runway, but the wheels bearings were frictionless, the plane would still take off. But there would be a problem. If the plane moves forward at a speed V and so the wheels, the belt would have to move backward at the same speed V, which means the wheels have to turn at 2V, which means the belt has to go at 2V, and so the wheels have to go at 3V and so on. The belt and wheel speed would ramp up approaching infinity and beyond.
Well, if the wheel's bearings are frictionless, nobody cares. The plane speeds up through the air and eventually takes off. And if the wheels don't blow up going that fast, we can say the value of belt and wheel speed are equal at infinity. So we are still good. But now, if we turn on the friction all over the place, as soon as the airplane moves forward, the same thing happens as the last case. The belt and wheel speeds would ramp up faster going towards infinity. But now, the wheel's bearings friction creates a growing force as the wheels turn faster, opposing the motion of the plane. At some high wheel speed, this force of friction becomes equal to the jet engine thrust and the plane stops moving forward. The airplane won't take off and the belt and wheels speed match and this satisfies the question too. Although, the belt would have to run at tens of thousands of kilometers for the friction to match the thrust. We have three answers now, but I think the real answer could be super stupid. The question states the airplane is sitting on the conveyor belt. Sitting, as in doing nothing. Nowhere it says the jet engines are on. It is like sitting on a regular runway. The airplane doesn't move and the belt and the wheels speed are the same zero. The answer can be as boring as that. But now we have four answers. In two of them the plane flies and in two of them it doesn't. And we got nowhere. That's why I hate these things with a mild passion. One more note to add is Mythbusters did try to bust a similar myth. In their case the belt was designed to run at the same speed as the airplane in the opposite direction, not the wheels. Which kind of was an obvious case, the airplane would fly with the wheel running at double the speed of the airplane as long as it was touching the belt. Anyway, why don't you follow me on Twitter with a mild passion? And more importantly, what are you waiting for? Go sign up for your 30 day free trial at brilliant.org slash electroboom. My sponsor Brilliant is the best place to learn science, math and computing through greatly interactive courses and quizzes. Brilliant is an educational platform I really like because they really care about their content, visual, hands-on interactivity and art of teaching as well as how easy it is to learn even complex concepts from them. I personally enjoy their logic courses and quizzes that are like mind challenges and I need to update my advanced math. Brilliant is my first option for these and they constantly add new lessons to their catalog every month. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced math to AI, data sciences, neural networks and more. You just open Brilliant on your computer or phone app for 15 minutes every day and not only you enjoy learning what you need in a fun way but also your spare idle time will be super productive. In the 30 day free trial you can finish lots of courses already and if you choose to stay the first 200 of you can get 20% off Brilliant annual premium subscription. So go ahead and thank you for watching.